G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today, I'm hanging out at Animals Anonymous here in Adelaide, and I want to introduce you to this girl here. Her name is Sugarloop, and she's a long-nosed potteroo. So stick around. Get So here in Australia, there was four species of potteroo when we first arrived in the country. Unfortunately, since then, one of them, the broad-faced potteroo, has become extinct thanks to the introduction of foxes and cats. The long-footed potteroo along the east coast is listed as endangered, and the Gilbert's potteroo on the bottom of Western Australia is critically endangered, being one of the most endangered mammals on the planet. The only one who's doing okay is this girl here, the long-nosed potteroo. And even she has had a massive reduction in her distribution with foxes, cats, habitat loss, and the reduction of the dense undergrowth that she needs to survive, really limiting where these guys can live anymore. So out of the four of them, as I said, the Gilbert's potter is literally on the brink of extinction. Today, there's only a hundred Gilbert's potteries left on the planet. Now, when you think of endangered wildlife, something like the giant panda, which gets millions and millions of dollars in aid every year, there's about 1800 giant pandas. There's less than a hundred Gilbert's potteroos and Who's heard of the Gilbert's Potteroo? But for 20 years, the Gilbert's Potteroo was even believed to be extinct. It wasn't until the last couple of decades where one was rediscovered when it was trapped by accident by somebody studying quokkas and wallabies in Western Australia. So we haven't quite lost them yet, but if we pull our finger out and we start looking after them, we can hopefully make sure they stick around for a lot longer. These guys are fairly unique as far as macropods goes. Now macropods basically means all the hopping things, kangaroos, wallabies, quokkas, all these sorts of things in that these guys aren't obligate herbivores. Potteroos are actually omnivorous. So like all the others, they'll eat grasses, roots, and tubers, but these guys will also pick up insects and grubs and things that are crawling around the forest floor. They're also really important for a couple of reasons as far as the fact that they're an ecosystem engineer. What they do as they hop around the bottom of the forest floor, they're constantly turning over the ground. This turning over helps all the leaf matter break down, which actually reduces things like all the fuel on the forest floor for fires. So these guys are sort of Australia's own little forest fire management. While they do this, they're also spreading the spores of certain species of fungi, native mushrooms, from one place to another as they eat them, and these spores drop in their droppings and get turned into the ground when they're sort of digging around. And a lot of these fungus are basically dependent on potteroos for dispersal. Some of these species of fungi, in turn, actually help the species of trees that they grow on get nutrients from the ground. So while this guy at first glance is just a simple little brown hopping animal, they're actually propping up an entire ecosystem. It sounds cliche, but every animal out there is important somehow. They've all got a role and the potteroo is no exception. Just like a lot of the other animals that we visit here at Animals Anonymous today, this guy here is an Australian icon. And luckily, these guys are able to bring potteroos to classrooms and schools and teach people about what we have. Because at the end of the day, we're only gonna conserve what we know about. If you'd like to know more about potteroos, please check out our friends Animals Anonymous on Facebook and tell them that Wicked Wildlife sent you. Other than that, I hope that you guys will start talking about these guys and there's plenty of things that you can do to conserve them. If you live in the natural range of any of these species, there's plenty of land care groups doing things and replanting habitat. And if you live in these areas, you can even plant places in your own yard to help these guys do a little bit better. Other than that, as always, thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please hit our subscribe button or follow us on Facebook, wherever you happen to watch us. And uh, if you want to become a part of the Wicked Wildlife team and help our videos come out more regularly and get us to more places like Animals Anonymous to show you some animals that I can't show you at home, maybe check us out on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Wicked Wildlife. Other than that, guys, as always, please be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care. <laughs>